Hello and welcome to Vavork. I'm Brian Watrous and this is part 40 in a 10-part video series where we're learning how to automate using vRealize Orchestrator. In this video we're going to do a slight variation on what we saw in the last video. In the previous video what we saw was how to create a VRO action that calls PowerShell code. We're going to do the same thing here but this time we're going to use something fancy called a placeholder. So, as you can see here, uh, we are once again going to call the exact same workflow that we called in the previous video. We're going to call generate an action from a PowerShell script. So we'll select that workflow, we'll click run, and it starts off the same way it did in the previous video. It pops up this window that asks us to supply some input parameters. In step one, it asks us to supply the PowerShell code that we want executed. And this code is very similar to what we saw in the previous video, but in the previous video, it did a write-output of the string hello world. And it was always hello world because hello world was hard-coded. But this time we've used a placeholder, which ultimately turns into an input parameter, an orchestrator input parameter. We've used a placeholder to make this, the action this is gonna generate be more flexible. Instead of always saying hello world, our action is going to say hello and then whatever name the user who's running our workflow or our action specifies. So all it takes to create these placeholders to create one or more is you just use this notation. So open curly brace, pound sign, um, a name for an, what will ultimately become an input parameter, followed by a pound sign, followed by a close parenthesis. And in this example here, we have one placeholder, but you could easily have multiple placeholders. You just type them into your PowerShell code. After specifying the PowerShell code that you want executed, we'll click Next. And here we see this exact same thing we saw in the previous video. Just like in the previous video, we need to specify the name of our newly auto-generated action. I'm going to call mine Hello Your Name instead of Hello World. And like the previous video, we need to specify which module we want the new action stored in. So again, I'll click Not Set and I'll specify which action module I want my action stored in. I'll click select, then I'll hit next. And then in the third page of input parameters, just like the previous video, we're given the option of also having a orchestrator workflow that'll call our new orchestrator action. If we want that, it'll automatically create the workflow for us. We just say yes and specify where we want our auto-generated workflow to be stored. And then we hit submit. What happens, once again, it, behind the scenes, is a new orchestrator action gets created that will call the PowerShell code that we specified. And then, again, optionally, we can specify that we want a workflow too. But here's our new action. If we edit the action and go to the scripting tab, we can see this code looks almost identical to the code that we saw in the previous video. But notice in this code, the placeholder which is actually just a, an input parameter, the placeholder has been inserted into our script that we want run. So again, this code is very similar, just has placeholders inserted where appropriate. And uh, the other thing that you'll notice that's different here is in the input parameters to the action, uh, we still see the host input parameter and the session ID input parameters, those are used for the same purpose they were used in the previous video. But because we used a placeholder, we have one additional input parameter called your name. So this is what our action looks like. Let's go take a look at what the auto-generated workflow looks like. So here's our auto-generated workflow called invoke script hello your name. If we edit the workflow and go to the inputs tab, Whereas in the previous video, there was just one input parameter, the host that the PowerShell code needs to run on. In this case here, we have an additional input parameter called your name, which was generated because we had a placeholder with the same name in our PowerShell code. So our workflow is slightly different than the previous video's workflow. It has this additional input parameter. The schema on the other hand looks darn near identical. Well, at, at, actually, at the schema level, it looks totally identical. Uh, what's not immediately obvious is that any of these schema elements, in particular this one here, 
any of the schema elements that need to see the placeholder input parameter uh, will need to set up variable binding to facilitate that. But the auto-generated uh, workflow already has that variable binding set up. So if you were to select, for instance, hello, your name, and look at the visual binding tab, you would see that the your name input parameter is set up with an inward binding to the hello, your name action that's been generated. So again, at the top level, this workflow schema looks just like we saw before. And if we run this workflow, again, clicking the Run button, the workflow starts off the exact same way it did in the previous video. It pops up the input parameter window where the first page of input parameters asks us which PowerShell server we want our PowerShell code to run on. And then in step two, or I should say step 1B, if we hit next, we'll go to step 1B, where step 1B asks us to supply any of the placeholder input parameter values. Now in the previous video, this page was blank because we had no placeholder variables. But because in this example, we had one placeholder variable, open curly brace, pound sign, your name, pound sign, close curly brace, we as a result have one additional input parameter here that the user has to supply for this workflow or the underlying action to work. And there you have it. That's a variation on what we saw in the previous video. So now your actions can be more flexible, but you're not limited to creating actions that simply call uh, PowerShell code that you write. Um, there are other techniques that you can use, including what we'll see in the next video, video number 41. We'll be taking a look at how you can auto generate an action that instead of calling PowerShell code, we'll call a PowerShell commandlet. So I'll see you in video number 41.